have to make an entrance, okay? We have to be coming from some place, okay? Uh, in uh, The Glass Menagerie, Tom's famous monologue at the end, I didn't go to the moon, I went much further, comes from the fact that he has just had this huge fight with his mother. And her last moment to him is, you can go to the moon for all I care. As he slams out of the apartment and descends the fire escape. <clears throat> now the actor has to go from being enraged at his mother, which he is, furious at her, to a totally different place when he gets to the bottom of those stairs and he turns to his audience and he begins to talk to them, okay? The actor has to make a decision, a choice decision of what happens to him as he descends those stairs. So from the moment he leaves that uh, uh, apartment, to the moment he's at the bottom of those fire escapes, the actor has to go through a transition. And it has to be very clean, very specific, and has to, the nail has to be hit right on the head in order for that moment to work. Now, any actor who comes in to audition using Tom's monologue has to come from one, the passion of the fight with the mother and the transition that brings him into the uh, uh, monologue. Well, why does he have to create the passion of the fight with his mother? Why not just do the transition into uh, the scene? That seems to be the easiest way. And that's what it would be. It would be the easiest way, but it wouldn't be the best way. And it wouldn't be the way that's going to fulfill the obligation of the monologue. So that passion has to be established. That happens seconds before he begins the monologue. Otherwise, the monologue's not going to be of the quality that the actor has the ability to bring to it. Okay? The media before life. Before what he has, speaks, you mean. Right. Be very before he speaks. Right. Any model, any scene that we do, we have to establish something beforehand that feeds the inner life of our character. We have to establish that before. And the people who are watching us on stage or the auditioners who are auditioning us need to see that that is happening, that we're coming from that. Not indicatively, but seeing that something is going on, that the actor doesn't come out on stage and go, hi, my name is Adam Hill, I'm an actor, and I want to do this monologue for you. I didn't go to the moon, I went much further. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay, it does not work that way. We're only cheating ourselves and we're only losing auditions because of it. What I said in that email that I sent out to everybody was I think more actors lose jobs, lose callbacks, lose agents when they're auditioning for agents and managers for this one reason more than any other reason, that they don't do the work that's needed before they do their scene. When I watch actors, I, and I tell you, if I catch one of my actors doing it, I kill them. 
standing off stage, shooting the bull to each other. Blah, blah, blah. Where'd you go last night? I don't know. Where did you go last night? Everything. Oh, it's my cue. I'll see you later and go on stage. I want to hit them over the head. One, how dare they cheat their audience out of the best performance that they can give them? How dare they do that? Because that's what they're doing. You're stealing money from your audience who pay to come to see you doing your best work. And you treat them this way? Two, what are you doing to yourself? How can you go out on that stage and love what you're doing and, and go out every night wanting this incredible experience so you can walk off the stage going, God, that felt really good tonight. God, that really flew tonight. God, that made me really feel great. And it's, it's the same thing for, for, for film work or TV work. It's the same, same uh, I was reading something about, uh, uh, no it wasn't, it was, I was watching uh, uh, the Fox Movie Channel and they were doing uh, the interview of the of people who created uh, a series and they were talking about allowing the actors to improvise and say, well, how much do you allow the actor to improvise? And they say, because of the quality of the actors that they have, they allow the actors to improvise because they know that the actors are improvising from their homework. They know the actors are improvising because they understand the structure of the scene, that they understand what is needed in the scene and the time frame in which it is to be played then you can allow an actor to improvise. So let's film as written, let's do an improvisation of it, do another improvisation, well let's go back and do it as written again, but at this time why don't we just throw that one line in that you improvised a moment ago. All of a sudden you have a very rich scene. And this is because of TV where you have to have these scripts written so fast that at times you need the actors who understand the characters, understand the situations, understand the relationships, who can bring a little something extra to what they're doing, okay? This work is so, so, so important. And to treat it casually, to treat it with the, the, the least amount of respect that you can give it, is detrimental to you and any kind of a career that you want to have. You notice I feel very strongly about this. I feel so strongly because you've heard me say it before, but acting is homework. It's homework. It's what you do before so you can bring to your performance, so that you can bring to your auditions so that you can bring to your fellow actors, so that they have something that they can work off of. That boils down to respect. Any questions about this? Because we're going to be doing uh, some immediate before lives in 